Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be getting into the Ascendant Challenge in Bay of Drowned Wishes. So, this Ascendant Challenge is probably the most elusive of them all. We've had some very powerful glitches fail to make it there. So for this particular one, you'll need at least two hunters with the Liar's Handshake exotic. We're going to be using the Liar's Launch, a Dropbox variant that Semi figured out. So it turns out you can launch sparrows pretty far with Liar's Handshake. So I'm just going to set my sparrow uh, here next to this uh, flipped one. Well, it's on the other side, so it's nice and open. And now I'm going to lower my light level. This is important because you want to be much lower light than the sparrow so you don't break it. Now I get my ride prompt and melee the sparrow in sync with a few other people. And it's out of there. Just wait for it to land. And there's actually a turn back out of box here so you gotta be a little bit careful. And we're there. So, you don't actually have to be on Hunter for this, but you do need at least two Hunters to get the distance for the launch. So here we'll be launching Semi out. Just get the punch at the same time. And there goes Semi now. So this is all fine and dandy, but what if you want to get the whole fire thing out? To do that, we're going to use the Interdimensional Res Breach. It's really quite amazing how well uh, IRB and Dropbox pair together. Basically, anytime you go somewhere with Dropbox, there is an IRB that can be used to get other people there. For this one, we actually have to do a Dropbox first to get to the uh, place we'll be setting up the IRB. So that's exciting. I'm just going to drop a sparrow off, and let's go. All right, and oh, guess that was too soon. Generally, I wait like six or seven seconds at any given spot. Some of them you don't need that long, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb. Once down, we just need to make our way over to where Semi is there. So the only thing stopping us from just doing this IRB directly from, say, the raid is that Bay of Drowned Wishes is blocked off and it would take us an IRB to even get there and we don't really have the option to do too. There's a large plane that uh, kind of blocks going directly up here, so you'll either need to go to the left or the right of it. I went right here. I'd recommend doing left normally. Let's just get up this hill so we can get a lay of the land. You'll see there are two rocks in front of us. The left one is a bit inside of the box, so I would definitely avoid that. Kind of forgot about setting the point here for a moment, but uh... Luckily I remembered in time. I'm just going to make my way out to where Semi is. This entire mist area is solid, so you don't have to uh, worry about falling through. And here we go. Oh. 
And with our IRB points set, all we need to do now is die to the Bay of John Wishes load. Unfortunately, that's easier said than done. It actually took me quite a while to work out uh, a nice, consistent way to do this. So you can benefit from my many failures here. You're going to want to uh, Sparrow fly up here. There are turnbacks outside of the map here as well. It's very strange. You don't really see that anywhere. So we're gonna make our way over this uh, protruding rock here. And I'm gonna show you the correct way to do this first, and then the way that I randomly got the IRB when I was trying to search for a good way to die to the load. So what you're going to want to do is drop to the right of the uh, the pillar here Guardian, down. and uh, aim for kind of this area. If you go too far you'll hit the load so don't want to do that. Just kind of hug the edge of where the turn back is. Then you throw a stasis nade to block the safety teleport the game tries to do, and run into the load. You should die to it every time. This is what I did on my successful run. I would not recommend doing it this way because it is very inconsistent. You can hug this to get out of the turn back and you want to give some time for it to count back up before you go. And then you can get up on top. In this particular case, I was seeing if I could hit the load near the top and have that kill me. Most of the time, the game will teleport you and uh, prevent the death, which is why you would use stasis to block that. Here, I just got rather lucky. But, that works. And now we're all out here. So, all that's left now is to actually go into the Ascendant Challenge itself. I'd recommend spending a little bit of time up here to uh, set some spawn points. Because you don't want to have to go through uh, that again. The, uh... The Liar's Launch, as uh, we've been calling it, uh, is a little bit tricky to get right. If you can Sparrow Fly out of it, you can just do that to uh, get to the Ascendant Challenge, but that is uh, Infinite Sparrow Flying, which is a little bit of a rarer skill. I'm still not terribly good at it. But as long as you're on a titan, you can just uh, sword fly over. You could probably do that uh, similarly on a warlock with Dawnblade. It's kind of hard to see these structures that you land on, but if you look closely, you can kind of make them out. Plus there's that uh, kind of light down there, which I think is part of it. There we go. It is quite dark. Just gotta wait for the flashes to kind of see where things are. We could go straight for the end, but don't get to break into this all that often, so try to kind of do it correctly. Although this is probably the most difficult uh, of the Ascendant Challenges to figure out. A whole lot of dropping in between a whole lot of tiny rocks. Ironically, the one with the fewest enemies is in fact the most difficult. Which is also fitting for how difficult this challenge is to get into. Those of you who have been around the channel for a while might know that I have something of an obsession with the uh, Bay of Drowned Wishes. You see, basically... All of the other Ascended Challenges can be dropped into from above. 
There's always some little landmark or something that just drops you into a funnel that goes all the way there. But we haven't been able to find one for the bay yet. Not to say it... You know, hey Toland. Not to say it doesn't exist, but if it does, it's probably somewhere weird. It's strange that there's often like a little funnel thing that'll guide you in once you're through. Might be good to just try to look for that now that we can uh, get underneath the... again. So, the other problem there is it's not very easy to get out of map here either. We weren't able to for the longest time. Even the mighty pocket finisher with its wall breaching abilities was not good enough to get us out, or at least I never managed to do that with it. Got myself embedded in quite a few rocks though, so that's something. It wasn't until the quantum finisher that we finally managed to break into here for the first time, but of course we don't have that anymore. But the, uh, the path is basically the same once the, uh, once the IRB is done. So a bit after, uh, after that, uh, Step came up with the, uh, Titan Slithering Technique. Which, uh, can be used to break into the bottom area of, uh, Bay of Drowned Wishes. So, I spent a good several hours, uh, here and there, just jumping off the map in random locations, hoping that maybe, maybe this will be the, uh, the time that I find the mysterious hole, because surely there's one here. There's one, like, basically everywhere. It's just so bizarre that this one is so difficult. Even the more recent box break techniques have trouble with it. I don't even think that uh, Dropbox was going to work here, because you can't really easily get a sparrow to anywhere that you could drop in a uh, bay. Because to even get out of map, of course, you had to do the Titan Slither and then manage to not hit the load, and yet safely summon a sparrow and hit the load and survive. Well, also happening to load somewhere that you could, uh, drop it. That, that was not gonna happen, and... You now you needed two IRBs for Last Wish, at least, and... You can get two of them later on, but then you would need a third to break out of, uh... The, uh, raid area, so I don't see that happening. But yeah... Going to enjoy uh, being able to get here while we can, because it takes quite powerful glitches to accomplish. Until maybe in the far off future, when after another five or six hours of jumping off the cliff, someone finds that elusive hole. But. In the meantime, I suppose this route will do. And we've got the liars launch to deal with any more pesky drop boxes. <laughs>